In the Hindu epic, the Mahabharata, the armies of the two warring clans are described in larger-than-life terms. This video will explain the composition of the armies, and compare the scriptural armies to actual military forces over time. The War of Apocalyptic Proportions described in the Mahabharata is known as the Kurukshetra War, which placed the smaller clan of Pandava against the larger, more powerful clan of Kaurava. Aside from the numerous divine warriors and giants employed by each clan, the majority of the fighting belonged to the divisional armies, known as the Akshauhini. The basic structure of one Akshauhini is exactly 21,870 elephants and 21,870 chariots, 65,610 horsemen, and 109,350 infantrymen, totaling up to 218,700 warriors on each division. The ratio of these units is exactly one elephant for every chariot. For every chariot there are three horsemen. For every three horsemen there are five infantrymen. This follows the mathematically pure 1-3-5 ratio. The Pandava clan had 7 of these Akshauhini divisions, while the Kaurava clan had 11, meaning the total number of warriors who participated in the singular 18-day long war was exactly 3.9 million. The war was so devastating and caused such destruction of human lives, only 11 people survived through divine intervention. This war consisted of so much bloodshed that it marked the end of the Devara Yuga and the beginning of the world's end in the Kali Yuga. Let's compare one Akshauhini to real-life armies and see how they stack up. According to estimates, Alexander the Great never commanded a force larger than 40,000 men at any given time. This would mean that compared to one Akshauhini, the army of antiquity's greatest emperor was outnumbered 5 to 1. According to estimates, the primary Roman legions at the height of the Roman Empire was 250,000, and stacking this up against a single Akshauhini, it is about an even match. To the armies of the mythical Hindu warlords, a single division was functionally larger than the entirety of the military force of the Roman Empire. Estimates place the total number of Napoleon's armies at the invasion of Russia at 600,000 men. This would mean that at the quantitative height of the coalition wars, the Grand Army of Napoleon Bonaparte at its mightiest was still less than half of the forces of the weaker of the two great Hindu clans. In the Second World War, the Nazi invasion of the Soviet Union, the day before Operation Barbarossa, consisted of roughly 3.7 million soldiers. This would mean that compared to all the forces of the battle during the Kurukshetra War, the only comparable military force which equals it is the singular largest invasion force ever seen on Earth. Imagine, if you will, the entire Eastern Front of the Second World War, a front alone which taken out of context of the rest of the Second World War would still count as the largest war in human history, happening over the course of 18 days, using nothing but Iron Age weapons in the floodplains of India. Ultimately, however, despite the scriptural sources of the Kurukshetra War, there remains little evidence to suggest that the armies of such mythical proportions were real, or in fact even possible. Historical sources do, in fact, line up with a rough timescale of the proposed Kurukshetra War, supporting the fact that there was a large-scale conflict at the time period. But the numbers and population, not only of people, but elephants and economic capacity simply do not match with reality. Like many stories of ancient military prowess, the Akshauhinis of the Kurukshetra War are greatly exaggerated compared to any possible military force at the time period. Centuries of retellings, additions, and exaggerations by poets and Brahmins have muddied the water so thoroughly that it is functionally impossible to gather what the actual Kurukshetra War of the 900s BC even was or was actually about. However, the story of the Kurukshetra War nonetheless provides a powerful mythological story and is one of the key elements of ancient Hindu literature dating to prehistory. Perhaps it's better to keep a founding myth.